Content Marketing, prepared for and presented at the 2014 Square One Entrepreneurship Training Program. Square One is a program of the Center for Emerging Technologies. CET is an affiliate of the Cortex Innovation Community. Square One is funded in part by the Missouri Technology Corporation. Uh, thank you. You all can hear me? Okay. Um, the standing partnership uh, presentation was excellent and so professional and probably more professional than, than I am. Um, so I feel sorry for Channel 9. I tend to cuss a lot, so I'm sorry. And I get <laughs> really uh, all over the place ADD. So just go along with the ride. You know, We'll see where it goes, right? So I'm going to hijack this presentation first to kind of uh, dovetail on what, uh, a little bit of what Chris says. So, you, you hear, um, you know, I'm very proud of my family. I'm very proud of my company. Um, however, I want to tell you I'm so honored to be here and I'm so impressed uh, with the guts that each one of you have. And I would be remiss if I didn't take a minute or two to talk about that. Um, manifest as it is today, I have 150 employees, two offices. Um, we have some exciting news I think to share in the next month or two that, believe it or not, will uh, quadruple the size of our company. Um, things are going really well, and I'm, I'm very, very blessed. Um, however, as Chris uh, said, I've uh, had four or five companies, um, two of them moderately successful. One, uh, you know, I, I hope it's very successful, and one, you know, a disaster. Um, I've had partnerships. I've had some that just in, ended in total um, you know, chaos and, and anger and horribleness. Uh, so I've been through all of that. Um, and about four years ago, um, almost to this day, literally I was on my hands and knees, um, on my knees praying to, to meet payroll. Um, and I, that was not the first time that I've been in that situation. So ahead of you on this journey, is sometimes you're going to be on your knees, and I, I just plead with you that uh, you know it'll be okay. And you uh, keep attending events like this, keep networking, uh, keep believing in yourself. And with everything going on in St. Louis right now, this town needs each one of you. You are the next Express Scripts, um, the next Enterprise Rent a Car. So, really, really, there's a lot of people like me that have a lot of faith in you, and, and I know you're going to just do really well. Um, what I love about organizations like this is that there's um, another organization waiting for you after this one. Multiple organizations here to support you. So I was president of a group called YEO or EO called the Entrepreneurs Organization. Litmus test to join is a million dollars in revenue, but we have another program underneath that called Accelerator, and I think you have to have 300,000 in revenue. And underneath that, we have another incubator. Uh, and we're just, we're one of many, including this organization. So this town is, um, is off the chart on uh, uh, providing such support. So anyway, just a big cheerleader for everything you're doing. And um, anyway, best of luck to you. So I have this agency called Manifest. Uh, again, I mentioned Chicago and St. Louis. I'm just going to give you a couple minutes of context. I have a few slides about us. But it sets the tone for what I want to talk about, and that is content marketing. Uh, when we talk about content marketing, um, there's a couple of different um, ways you can describe it. I'm looking at content in the broadest definition possible. You know, if it reflects uh, positively on your service or product, uh, and it's shared and distributed, uh, that's content to me. So it could be written, it could be verbal, it could be video, et cetera, et cetera. That is. Um, an asset that's going to work for you to drive business, affinity, and, and loyalty for your product. Uh, I'm going to show you some, uh, not examples, but show you a couple of um, logos of some big clients. And, but I think it's important because there are people just like you, and they're just in rooms uh, across town, across country, really grappling with how to engage customers, consumers um, in this day and age. And it's a lot that's going on in this space. Um, again, two locations, 150 employees, I told you all that. Um, what I'm really excited about is uh, right across the street, I drove here, but I found out I could have walked. Um, and I had to do a U-turn, I had a map and everything. It was like such an idiot. So I just, so, no, thank God you were here. And then I came in here and it said, you were here, like right when I was at that door. So that's fine. 
Um, and then the guy back there made fun of my phone because I haven't gotten the new iPhone yet, so I'm supposed to be this progressive digital thing where I have this cracked iPhone 5. But, uh, anyhow, um, but it, we did spend literally $2 million on the, this picture that you're sending, yeah, looking at right there. It's right across the street. You're welcome to come visit anytime. Uh, it's called Manifest Digital. It's in the 4240 building. It's a sister brother to this building, uh, same group. Um, runs and manages it. And so we have uh, about 18,000 square feet. And what we are looking to do is aggregate content, distribute content, create content. Um, and uh, we are um, to, we're high density uh, office space, meaning we want to get people right on top of each other, talking, collaborating, uh, concepting, uh, arguing, wrestling with content and distributing. And then we have a big wall, a big 40, 45 foot wall you see back there that has live feeds from our social media uh, assets that we have out there for various clients. Uh, we have a Google feed of just what's trending in the marketplace. And then we show <clears throat> original content that we're creating. We have a, uh, a video suite there where we create a lot of content for our consumers. Uh, but the reason why we built the space the way it is, and the reason why we're on top of each other, is that we have to be fast. And you have to have a lot of agility. This business model of advertising, I'm going to tell you a little dirty little secret, is so not glamorous, I can't even tell you. Uh, advertising agencies did not create Facebook or Twitter or anything. They really, really lacked um, an innovation. And I had a problem with that. It, the, the terms we use, the creative director, writers, copywriters, et cetera, et cetera, those are all Mad Men era terms that have been around for a long, long time. And that is just not how the world works, and that's certainly not how digital marketing works. Uh, so we had to um, do something different. I'm glad to give the guy that made photo on my phone also mention something about Blue Ocean. Totally a Blue Ocean. Um, Philosophy, and if you know that or don't know, I know it's kind of a buzz term, but it's it's uh, it's a simple concept. And uh, you go to Wikipedia. Uh, I think Forbes has a lot of uh, uh, reprints of some uh, basic narratives of what Blue Ocean is. But basically, it's you're driving innovation, but you're also offering a economic um, incentive to buy. So it's innovation married with um, economic, I guess, financial uh, efficiency. And um, you know, again, read it, and that's what this whole um, uh, suite is built for. And that is agility, speed, in order to save our clients a lot of money and to be much more efficient, get the message out there quicker, be much more agile. And so far, it's it's really working. Uh, and I forgot to mention, please interrupt me anytime with any questions. So all these clients, Motorola, Allstate, Post, Coles, Brand, just the sampling of our clients uh, are all grappling with how to spend the advertising dollars. You know um, money can be spent whether you have $100 or $100 million. How do you spend that money to uh, get your message out into the marketplace? Everyone has major, major heartburn on this subject matter. And most of them, because they're in meetings all day and they're very nervous, uh, they will default to safe. And safe is still TV, it's still traditional media, although the consumer, being so far ahead of where a lot of these brands are, are saying, hey, that's not how I uh, consume media anymore. Uh, it's much more fragmented, non-linear. I'm gonna, you know, I drink, personally, I drink, first cuss word, I drink a shitload of Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> you look at all the Diet Mountain Dew marketing, it does not, it's not targeted to a 50-year-old guy, 50 guy who lives in Glendale. It's marketed to like a 17-year-old boy with flat free time on his hand. So, so that is the marketplace for all of these uh, brands. So they're determining how they um, engage people. And as Chris introduced, uh, content is, uh, is the shining light on, uh, on how to engage consumers in a very authentic, authentic way. Um, I'm trying to see if I can example here. Real quick, Perina's a great example. Uh, all of a sudden, Perina found themselves in kind of the Bud Light world. Uh, for about 20, 30 years, they were making tons of money. Uh, Perina's a wonderful company, really smart people over there. Um, 
But all of a sudden, the world wanted craft beer, just like Ken Irish Bush found out. People want craft uh, pet food. You know, they really started reading labels all of a sudden. Green, it's a great company. They make a great product, but the consumer pivoted really quick. And how do you turn that big uh, shift around if you're Farina? And that's where a company like ours and others uh, really help them by uh, actively listening to the marketplace and uh, marketing in a way that is much more personalized. And we can do that with content. It's hard to get a lot of authenticity and street cred when you're just blasting out TV commercials that are almost sad. You know, they're just the same commercials you've seen for decades. Really not a differentiation. Were you the company that came up with a special blend for the particular dog with the picture on the bag for Korea? No. Oh. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> but I'm on yeah. camera and I can't oh. say <laughs> I wasn't on camera. If we can edit it. Yes, I guess I was. But that, that was pivoting. I thought. No, it was great. And so if you go to see, I don't think this is a secret, but I think if you, if you go to um, 4240 across the street, Ryan, Karina has an innovation office over there where they are working on these type of products right now. They are trying to uh, hyper-personalize pet food, if you will. And they, they've got some notoriety about it. So you can actually type in the type of uh, diet you believe your uh, pet would like, and they will create a custom product. So it's in the incubation phase. But that is, again, Karina's very perceptive and uh, is uh, not uh, going to delay what is inevitable in that space. And I think you're seeing it with Anheuser Busch too, right? They're buying a lot of microbrews because, uh, you know, when's the last time you've seen a really funny Bud Light commercial of Budweiser? They're just not funny anymore. When when insurance companies have are much more innovative with TV, progressive flow. I mean, that's funny stuff. And when's the, you know, I, you can't even say that with. Uh, and it's not that they aren't writing funny stuff for some of these brands. It's just they were funny 20 years ago, and it's just tired. The consumers just uh, would like to hear something. Different message, and I think it's more on the micro group side, and that's what the brands are trying to do. Um, so, anyway, so we have products and services, and all they, the one common thing they're all dealing with: how, how are we going to engage uh, a customer in the same situation with you? How are, we, how are you going to take your product or service, and how am I going to uh, have authenticity, and how am I going to build kind of reputation capital, which I'll talk about in a second. It's a video. I have my website. We don't have sound here, so I'll play it for you. Go to my website, manifestdigital.com. Okay. Very, very important. Um, you are and will always be the CMO. So I have a lot of friends. I just came from a EO meeting, uh, about a dozen presidents of various companies around town, some not that much bigger than your company, some that were just started a year or two ago and are now a million or two in revenue. And they're always saying, um, Dan, you have a you know, a small company that can help you with marketing. And as much as you'd like to have a standing partnership or manifest, obviously budgets can, uh, it's hard to afford such services when you're just starting out. And I will tell you, no matter what, even if you had a million dollars, you are the CMO. No one is more visceral. You had a great asking a second ago about how to, went back to that blue ocean, you know, what would you do if you were surface LA? Um, your just your your soul in your in your company and your product and service. You're so passionate about who's better. You can give money some you know Nimrod, you know some person who's going to write some copy for you. No, you're so much more talented. And that visceral attitude that you have um, is you're the person. You have to set the tone and tenor of how your brand is represented. So even if you're a very left brain person. You've never spoken in front of a group, and you are—you just have a great idea, and you—you know—it's just not your thing. Well, get over yourself. You are amazing at, at your product. I'd rather hear you talk about it than anyone else. You are 100% believable because you have skin in the game. You're going to make it happen. So let me hear from you, and then—and then start creating content that reflects you. But you control the narrative. Don't hand it off to anyone else. You control the, the why of your product. Why? You'll, you'll list all the what's, but why do you exist? And it's nerve wracking to uh, have that why conversation. Why am I even going through all this trouble? Why did, what is the why behind my product or service? But well, once you land on that why, why you're doing it, then um, 
your elevator pitch at the Christmas party or whatever you're at coming up will be very fluid and, uh, and genuine. Uh, marketing goals equal business goals. So quantify everything, very, very important. There is no, uh, again, we go back to the Mad Men era. Uh, let's just spend a lot of money on marketing. Of course, they have KPIs and metrics, but they're all crap. Let me tell you something, they're all horrible and they, there's so much wasted advertising in the world. And so one thing that when you go back to that picture of my office and the, you know, the big video wall, uh, always has math on it. We're always looking at percentages or numbers of how we're increasing on not, not, not uh, friends and likes so much, uh, but sentiment, percentage of uh, recognition, these type of things. So at a big brand level, we want to quantify everything, but we want to quantify what you're doing. So when, I'm gonna just show you some, loosely some content calendars that we use, but no matter what, uh, any goal that you have, any, um, any, any task that you're doing in the marketing uh, space needs to have a number of tasks. Like you're gonna do it three times a week, or I'm gonna increase this by 20%. Always, always uh, put a number next to it. Uh, when it comes to uh, marketing, it's if you go to a lot of organizations, marketing people seldom make it up to the CEO level because a lot of times they've just never had to quantify. They never really, really had to measure and show success. And they, they were uh, congratulated by a nice brochure or a cool logo or at a big scale with a, with a Super Bowl commercial or something. And a lot of times sales Sales did not uh, correspond or go in parallel to marketing. So if it's not working, that's it's what's great about today's uh, digital space. You can change, you can iterate, you can pivot. Um, and, uh, but you have to measure, you have to measure. So um, we talked about content, not really a definition, but kind of how I you know, wrote this uh, probably a year ago is it turns your brand, content marketing is a 24-7 media engine. Again, once it goes out in digital space, it you know, should be working on your behalf. It's a 24-7 media engine that turns your brand into a publishing hub, broadening your consumer influence. So think of yourself as a publisher. Modern day post-dispatch, modern day KOB. You are, uh, again, creating it, aggregating it, and distributing that content. And What's wonderful about today, what's wonderful about uh, whether you have 10 cents in your pocket or thousands in your pocket, is that there's a lot of different uh, vehicles to distribute your message. Um, and you know most of them, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, uh, Instagram. Um, but these, uh, these are, uh, especially if you're in the B2B space, there's uh, vertical specific uh, blog, uh, you know, blogs to follow areas to distribute your message, um, start your own blog to a specific vertical, you know, if you're in the plumbing industry, to, to really focus on that industry. There's always a lot of people that are hyper curious in those particular verticals. Again, you all represent so many businesses. I, it's hard for me to get very uh, detailed here, but um, there is an audience for your message. And either it's very specific uh, if you're you know, in an industry that requires uh, a lot of information, they want specificity. Um, there's also an ability to brand it yourself, make yourself the expert. You control the narrative, you control the vocabulary. No, you'd come up to me and tell me what your industry is and instantly, right now, I don't know, you're from Adam, you have credibility to me. You sound smart, you've gone to all this trouble. Um, don't be shy. You know, you um, don't let someone else control the narrative because they've been in the market longer. They could be obsolete within weeks, months, and years, or a few years. So why aren't you the next one that's uh, controlling the tone and tenor and the narrative of what's being said in the marketplace? You know, at your disposal, white papers, uh, slide shares, blogs, websites, uh, you know, every social media, your, your, your coming of age in, uh, in an explosive era. We've never seen this. This is, it wasn't even around five years ago. Not even five years. So I know some people in the class are trying to disrupt in industries with well-established players. So let's say the arenas of the world. Yeah. Um, and whenever they're one person, and maybe a team of, let's say, 10, 
how could they effectively fight off a social media campaign of a period? Yeah. And their with their limited resources. Uh, so let's because brain is a client, so let's totally take them. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, to speak to that, I mean, how often do you actually buy a product based on a Twitter feed or a, or a Facebook post? I mean, who shops using Facebook or Twitter? Women do. Mm -hmm. Well, it, 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 that, this is excellent that you bring it up. So let me answer, that's awesome. So I want to talk about that. So first of all, uh, you're assuming that those companies do it really well. They do it. Fortunately for me, they do it really, really bad, except for Prina. Prina's great. Um, so you're assuming they do it really well. I am telling you, I, I was with someone today that I think in this town is the number one search engine um, guru, works with small companies, big companies all over the country. Everything is, in the last three weeks is, from Google has, has changed, you know, almost 180. Just in one week with a couple of algorithm changes that they've that they've made, and I was just soaking in all this, uh, the changes. I know my clients don't know, it. I just because Google wasn't announcing it. And so it was, um, um, it's just so fluid. So I guess don't assume that these companies have um, the sophistication, because in some cases it's opposite. Sometimes they will buy tools that are available that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. They'll, they'll hire people that, um, or social media experts that are really stuck on a certain dogma and are pontificators. And um, that is not what you know we preach at all. We are very present in the moment. We want to be um, so just you know again, again be a bit selfish and be a bit um, have some bravado that you can be loud in the space and you know that's not a lot of specifics, but I just my message there is don't assume that they're bad in this game. Uh, with regard to social media, I would say social media, to your question, is, um, I, I don't know, maybe 5% of my business, 10%. I'm in the content creation business. Social media is a vehicle to distribute. So I think TV is great. I think radio, I think it's all great if it's returning an ROI. Um, but social media is, um, to some female product, you know, to some products so valuable. I mean, Pinterest is 98% female. It's, um, it, the subject matter that's on there is is on fire. It's gonna be the biggest IPO coming out this coming year. Uh, Pinterest never went, did an IPO with that. So they're uh, in multiple, it's really, really high right now. And, and I think you're gonna see them even explode further. Now they're 2%, I'm one of the 2% of guys, because I'm in the industry, I'm on it. But there's a lot of value in that space. Um, but I don't, I think um, kind of the emotion behind your question a little bit ago um, is well, and I think it's important, um, is that for, I don't know, three, four, five years, it was oversold, like it was this panacea. And, um, and it, it's not, it's, it doesn't, sometimes it sells products for sure, but um, for a lot of our brands, the ones you saw there, it's the consumer research behind it. It's amazing. We're getting sentiment. We're finding trends. We're finding different uses that people use for brands. Um, people like you are out there and finding a weakness with some brands, and they're starting new. So it's um, to me, it's like to say social media is a, you know a panacea and it's it's everything. I, it's all contextual. I don't know. What to say. See, I understand that there's a lot of directed advertising that results from what you're searching for, and so that you, you see the ads that come up that are relevant to that and, yeah. and, and what you're viewing. But so, but that's not, is that using social media, I guess, or I mean, but you're, you're, you're hiring an ad firm to direct to social media, but we don't actually go to social media to find products. So, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think where he's struggling is there's certain media that generates interest and there's other media that generates sales. Right. So I look at a lot of the sites you named as those that generate interest and get people talking about a product or service. It's, it's an interaction point, not an advertisement. Not a, not not a, a spam platform. Well, it, it works as an advertisement because they're getting impressions of those companies. So, so Scott Trade's a client. I think they're both, you're, all, you're all right. So Scott Trade's a client. A lot of client content that we put out is um, content about investing. It's not, we're not selling anything, we're giving investment advice. 
uh, for an ind for a <coughs> independent investor, and it's so well appreciated, and a lot of it's on social media, and they talk to their groups on social media. So that's where we get a lot of great feedback. So if you go to T. Rowe Price, to E. Trade. Uh, to Scott Trade, and you go to those social media followers, guys that look just like you, guys right in your demo, uh, they are, how can I do without it? It's where I get my tips, it's, and, and I really appreciate that E-Trade provides this type of content. content. So we, not, not for everyone, but for a lot of people. Four words, like this on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. That's, I see that a lot now on, on a lot of things, you know, uh, news, uh, you know, yeah. news, not to get too granular, you're going to be hearing a lot less of that because Facebook's turned to total pay, and so we can't, that doesn't really, that's not even a metric for us anymore to get likes. We're just, it's just a, uh, in your life, as you're on Facebook, so I'm on like six or seven times a day looking at my brands or personally, and it's just the way I communicate. So if a brand is providing value and quality content, then it's, you know, I, I, all we hear is positive from all the people because the great thing about it, it's so self-policing. If you're here, it would be like me staying too close to you if I'm insisting myself on you, you're going to say, F off. Like, why would I want it? So it's, uh, I would say that um, it oversold itself early on, but it's invaluable now, and, and uh, clients are really appreciating it because TV and traditional broadcast is so awful. And Question then, back here, Dan. Huh? Yeah. Uh, quick question. Um, on the previous slide, you mentioned that instead of quantifying using likes and friends, you use sentiment and recognition. Right. How do you go about quantifying? There's just a lot of great tools out there right now that Is it uh, all that algorithm software absolutely comes exactly. up on the dashboard. And you can just and they synthesize all that and will tell. Like for uh, for one of our clients, Honey Bunches of Oats uh, competes against Special K Cheerios. So we're listening to what people are saying about those products, um, and we'll take that information and it'll reflect upon the kind of content that I'm creating. So if there's, um, you know, there's a heavy, you know, we, we're in a period, and we still are, uh, especially with women where they felt really guilty about body image and weight and so forth, and so some brands oversold and put forth a you know, not a real realistic um, image of what women look like. And so uh, products like Dove really picked up in the social space. Uh, Special K really picked up. That's more about weight management and healthy lifestyle. So they started picking up on that. We picked up uh, Honey Bunches and Boats. Uh, we, we worked with a lot of family issues. What's a working mom? So our typical consumer, we have archetypes. Um, be for you all as well as we have personas of who your client is and you can research persona development it really helps we do it with all of our clients and so for honey bunches of oats it's um we call her jennifer and she's got like 2.2 kids she might be a single mom and she's exhausted at the end of the day she doesn't really feel good in the morning about what she gives her kids because she's hurried and late but she does want to help her kids in some way feel good about herself so all of that will, a representative population of that will speak in the social space. We will listen for that, and we will want to talk to her like an adult and talk and give her content that she appreciates and shares. And there is no bigger social media presence than females, and especially moms. And they talk, millions and millions and millions of them around on social media talking all the time. So a lot of the content, based on the sentiment that we gather, uh, will be directed towards these women. So how are you gathering that sentiment? It's tool, It's various tools you out there. Like the, the one's called Iconic culture. culture, and it's literally like $70,000 a year, and it kind of you know, uh, scrapes the internet and the social space for these type of conversations. So it's like a software? Yeah, it's a SaaS. It's an annual subscription base. Okay, SaaS. Okay. Yeah, and a lot of those get very antiquated, and there'll be a new one next year that will hold the value of it. Did you guys say something? No, I, I'm, I'm going ahead, and I think you're going to go through some of the software okay. later on. So this graphic I totally stole from Google a couple hours ago. Um, so uh, it's a beast <coughs> that must be fed, and you've got to feed it. Um, again, you're the CMO of your company. You're very passionate. You're authentic about 
what your Y is. So how are you going to distribute it? And each one of these, and it was talked about before, I could spend an hour on each one or hours on each one. And it is, again, the broadest definition of content, but it's you're controlling the narrative. Uh, you're having enough confidence in yourself to put content out there uh, so you have this digital footprint. Because not only for um, uh, that you control the narrative and that you uh, start establishing yourself as a thought leader in your particular space, but that you also help with search and you help with just that digital footprint that you're easily found. So when you do make that sales call, um, when you are giving that proposition to your client that if they do a search for you, you're not anonymous. So um, if your content is authentic and you really wrote a, a unique perspective on your own blog and it's out there um, and someone comes searching for it, again, they will distribute that hopefully and they'll share it with their coworkers and say, hey, this is some, somebody we should consider. It has a uh, exponential effect and uh, we're seeing it uh, work amazingly with all the brands that you, that you saw. Trust me, Scott Trade is very, very different than a Honey Bunches of Oats, Fruity Pebbles, another brand, totally different than uh, Motorola, helping them with the new phone that we're marketing. Um, you know, where you are, so if you started your company a week ago, or if you started your company a couple years ago, if you're on your third company and your first two were learning lessons, uh, wherever you are, um, you know, we look at the content marketing kind of a maturity spectrum. Are you reactive? Are you engaged? Managed? Engaged? Proactive? Optimized? How am I doing all the time? Plenty of time. Okay. Um, and so we do this with our clients. And what you need to do and say, are you reactive and you're anonymous? Are you without any type of digital footprint? Or are you at the other end of the spectrum, optimized? You're just a machine. You're totally, usually ego-driven. You are going to make sure your voice is heard. Uh, you're not going to, um, you're not afraid to pontificate, and you're going to have a digital footprint that's really, really out there. Some, sometimes it's a bit generational. Some people grew up knowing how to navigate these waters uh, to be able to distribute content and building PowerPoint decks and getting things on SlideShare, uh, being a writer who's uh, very fluid in long form writing and writing blogs is very easy. Um, you know, maybe they're just a little bit more, maybe some of you are a little bit more sophisticated in this space. Um, but maybe some are not. Uh, nonetheless, uh, identifying exactly where you are in this space and, uh, and, and, and being a bit vulnerable and saying, okay, this is what I have. I have a great idea. I know my why, but you know, I just don't have an IQ in this space to really uh, put forth. But I do go back. You cannot um, be subservient to anyone when it comes to uh, the direction and the narrative you want to take this message. You've got to own it and you know, starting today. Um, so what we do <clears throat> with this type of content that we have out there is um, we used to, the graph that's not up there, but is, um, and the, we had some great slides on the last presentation about planning and going through a methodic planning process. Of, and it ladders up, that pyramid is a great tool to discipline yourself to sit and have those hard conversations Everything from your logo to your elevator pitch to your whys. Um, but once you figure that out, where the industry has had a lot of um, problems uh, to its demise, um, Madison Avenue all the way to St. Louis, and that they planned on an annual basis. They uh, are budget focused and they will put an annual plan together. Um, that absolutely does not work, especially in the digital space. The consumer out there, no matter what your product is, again, is nonlinear. They might come across your product in uh, word of mouth, basic research, middle of the night, morning, um, and you have to have, again, going back to that footprint, by having a lot of content out there, hopefully you will intersect uh, at the time and place where they will most uh, desire your message. And if you're planning a year out and you're overthinking it, then generally uh, we are seeing that, that those days are long gone. That the appetite is for you know focus on quick burst sprints that ladder up to an overarching big idea. Um, that consumers like short, loud campaigns. Um, and although that's a very broad statement, I, as we market our agency, it's the same thing. 
We're not overthinking and we're not planning year out, year out. We're planning in two, three month cycles and we're building calendars, which I'll talk about, and we're going to be on top of this, all for the reason to be able to listen, to, to hopefully get feedback quickly, and to be able to pivot and not walk into some year long marketing plan that will be uh, a dinosaur six months in. So this is a couple of different calendars that two of them we use, one of them I grab. Um, it's really, really simple. It goes back to the, some of the um, worksheets that you had before. It's a calendar and it has numbers on it and it has, it takes all your content tools that you're putting out there, be it a blog, be it social media, and it quantifies it and it makes you disciplined to monitor it on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Again, for an agency like ours, we don't go more than three months out. We'll, we'll have it 12 months out just to, to, uh, to have some longer term, maybe seasonal things that we want to do. But we really want to, to meet on it weekly. What are people saying about Manifest Digital? Uh, what do we need to get out there? Uh, do we need to do more speaking events? Um, who, uh, what, what do we need to be right about? Who's sharing our information? Who's not sharing our information? And the worst thing we want to do is to continue to give oxygen to things that aren't working. Yeah. Do you guys do like a schedule as well as far as like we'll post on Twitter every three three to four days or yeah. on Facebook every? Yeah, th that hasn't changed. That's been around for a while. And we, uh, I think for ours, we're on there three or four times a day. And we, um, there used to be, here's the rule. If you're, kind of, if you're an interesting person, people are going to want to hear about you. And they'll want to hear about mm -hmm. you a lot. You know, if you're not an interesting person, then it's going to seem like you're insisting yourself. So um, I, we just can't predict when people are going to be reading our Twitter feeds and our content. And a lot of our demo, a lot of our the people we want to hire are pretty damn sophisticated. As far as social media, and we're on all the time. If you go to an office like myself or go to any of our clients, I mean, they're looking at Facebook daily and Twitter all, all the time. So we have to be on there. We want to be relevant. All of our clients are on there. But we have so much content, not just because we're an agency, it's just we made it important. We feel like we have something special to say. We have some great insights to share. So in our place, we have technology people, we have um, writers, we have creative, um, we have user experience, we have different departments. They all are great, smart people. Some people like to write long form, some short form. Four years ago, it was just me, and I, I, had, I literally had a Jerry Maguire moment I left my other company, one person came with it, it was just me. I had I was just crapping out content left and right, even at that time, four years ago. And um, because I knew I was so small that I had to have something. What, what do I have? I don't have a lot of money, uh, but I, I do have free press out there, and I do know that if I ask people to share and to be my cheerleaders, and if I wrote something interesting, and I had interesting, more visual world now, if I had interesting photos, especially now and interesting videos, people will share that. So when people ask me how can I share, <clears throat> you're a sole proprietor, it's just one person. You know, I don't want you to get so distracted from your business that you're not gonna have time. But um, some of my competition maybe have 20 or 30 posts a day and they're building, you know, they're hundred million dollar companies. They're putting it out all the time. A lot of that content, I'm, I appreciate it. It's a lot of smart stuff. A lot of stuff they're sharing from stuff that they read, but they're kind of like-minded people and they have good content to share. So they, they don't put a lot of crap out. So if someone has a lot of junk then it's self-policing, they'll quit following or I'll quit following them. Um, just a couple of 101, um, even if you're just one person, never go dark. You gotta be on all the time, always on. Make this content, 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 content. Have it out there all the time. Um, I think that when I talk <coughs> about digital footprint, it's your reputation. People go, you know, what's it going to serve me if only one person reads it? Well, maybe one person right now, but it lives on. And it's going to show, it's going to be your fingerprint on who you are as a person, what kind of business owner, how you think. If, you're, if you have that great of an idea and your idea is that special, I would really be take a moment out of each day to make sure that you're putting that in a, a nice package and sharing it for, for the rest of the world. Uh, yes? I wanted to ask about your content calendar. Is there a tool that, we'll, that we could find to use um, that can help us gauge. I have a couple of tools I'll show you about here in a second. Great. So, um, but that's a great question. And then I just what I keep saying, uh, and I'll, I'll wrap this up, uh, is you control the narrative. Um, 
divide came, how do I say this? So the world did not need another advertising agency in St. Louis or in the United States mm -hmm. to say that. Um, if I said I was a full service digital agency, so what? I would, clients would kick me out. I mean, I would have no value. So when I go in visceral about content, about Blue Ocean, when I go in visceral about reputation <coughs> capital, that gets me a few more audiences than if I, if I said um, <laughs> that I was a full service digital agency. I have a why. I have a really hardcore why in my life and my business, and that's why it's important for you to control the narrative. Um, and it's okay to, to have ego here. It's, it's, in fact, you have to insist that you have ego or you just, you'll get lost in the crowd. Um, when you're going through this, if you're, again, I don't have a lot of context here with your, but if you're one person or two or three, this is where a lot of people fall down and you can't read it or I think you have a printout, and that is your internal audience. And I just wanted to have one slide here that um, even at my place, those, those are the stepchildren sometimes when it comes to messaging. And, it's, and if I've made a mistake here, it's been many, many times, is I need to take them along the ride with me. I have to make sure uh, I have a lot of ego, I'm really fast, I think I'm a nice guy, I have a lot of good time, you know, great time with my employees, we're an agency, so we have a lot of beer, it's a cool place to work, all that kind of stuff, but at the end of the day, do they know really what we stand for? Can they really um, tell the marketplace our differences like I can? And uh, a recent survey showed no, across the board, uh, we're doing a horrible job, and I would say that most of us do a horrible job. So. Get, get your whole team. Uh, it doesn't mean singing on the same hymnal that every single words uh, have to be, ver all the words have to be verbatim, but it's really, really important that uh, your internal audiences uh, are uh, on board, your vendors, your employees, your you know, accountants, all that, that they clearly know. They're great people to practice with. If you have a lot of ego and think your product is good, we'll prove it. Take it to them and see if they, uh, they really resonate with it. It means a lot to them. Uh, just another slide I want to throw in here, and it's so obvious, but I cannot tell you how it's just off the chart. Um, and that is mobile. So no matter what your business is, um, designing for the web first is, is just not. It's got to be mobile first, nine times out of ten. It's just even if you're in the most mundane B2B industry, if you're not at least thinking mobile, uh, because it has its own set of rules. Uh, it's on hardware limitations. It's just, and it, it makes us all better marketers, quite frankly, because we have to be much more concise. Um, just one kid story, real quick. Am I doing okay on time? I'll wrap up. Um, so, my 18 year old son the other day was showing me a video on um, Tonight Show with what's his name? Okay. Jimmy, Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. And um, he uh, was watching it and said it was funny, some whatever the hell it was. It was funny. And I, uh, I said, no, he said, well, how, you know, I said, how, how can you watch Jimmy Fallon? And he looked at me, he's 18, he's like, what do you mean watch him? I'm watching him. I said, no, on TV. He goes, he's a TV show? And so he didn't even know Jimmy Fallon had a TV show. He only knew him for months and months and months as this guy who has funny clips on, online. So again, kind of an extreme example of mobile, but um, again, you know, this is our future leaders, workers, etc. It's it's all in this place. Um, tools. There's a lot of tools that we talked about that that come out all the time. Uh, no matter how small your business is, even Google Analytics, free tool, very very important. Take time to, to learn that. But as you go upstream, a lot of tools that uh, are worth in, in, uh, investing and in. just be somewhat intellectually curious about measuring social and Google it, you'll find some. Uh, so I want to give you a few here. Hootsuite, very affordable aggregator of all your social. You can put your competitor social in there, see what people are saying. Uh, talk about the value of social. It was brought up before. What's your competition doing in social? Um, there's a lot of free tools out there that are inexpensive tools. Um, I want to give you a couple. If you do need an agency, a couple of them here in town that are small that I know would be willing to work with uh, startup companies, Timmerman and Insight Advice. Um, oh, I love them. Yeah. Inside yeah. advice is awesome. Yeah. Awesome, they are. Uh, iterate, experiment. Uh, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Process is a marriage counselor. Do that calendar. Back. Here's my answer for the calendar. Excel spreadsheet. 12 months. Template. Template. That, 
Google it. <laughs> I just have been, you can do content calendar. They're all over the place. Um, always focus on increasing your digital footprint. You control the net narrative. I've said that. You know, be a digital ass kicker. Don't blow it at all. I'm depending on you all. Um, and content, content, more content. Um, if you want to really get specific, uh, this is a very top line. Dan, Cur Dan Dr. Curran at Manifest Digital. Anytime, come by. Cortex 4240, thank you all so much. Yep. The last question, is there a, what is your perspective on a kind of a trend that's developing where the user base of Facebook is declining and social media and other things seem like there's some of, of a backlash yeah. with uh, social media. And I guess oversaturation, people have used it, it was great, they used it a lot, and then it's, they're kind of moving on. Yeah, we see every year you hear what's gonna be the Facebook killer. The fact of the matter is Facebook has so much critical mass, it's still growing internationally, it's still part, it's a, it's a cultural phenomenon. So when people ask what's the next big thing, um, really we saw, we're seeing a little bit with Instagram, but the next big thing is the speed of changing of everything. It, it's, it's really everyone wants the next tool. We, we're not seeing anything right now. Uh, we, you know, we, 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 again, you get to be very present in the moment, like Vine, like Vine's a great example. Vine peaked, it's kind of coming down. Like, these things you can't get too excited about, you really never know. And I, I think the next billionaire out there, it's serendipity and luck and hard work and all that kind of stuff, so. You made mention about metrics, so what is the alternative measure? Um, you mentioned percent of sen sentiment, percent of recognition as, th as ways to measure, but if we're not looking at metrics as effective, what are we telling our clients? Um, I'm, a, I'm in content production, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and they say, well, how do I know that this is working or okay. I, I, first of all, I think it's, you got to take, you got to take their, their business um, goals oh, and okay. you say, we're going to go swim side by side. I'm not going to be able to tell you if my content affected your sales unless we're totally in bed together. Right. So it's a two way street. I will help quantify this, but I want to be totally close to your sales in the process as well. Sure. And that's what, that's another big change. We, and then you do, after a while, like Post Foods, every other company is, um, General Mills, Kraft, they're all down double digits and Post Foods are reclined they're up. And we uh, give social all the credit, no, but they give it some, for sure. And because we stay really close to sales and micro-marketing and geographical marketing. So you gotta stay close. And Why do you only take 20 clients at a time for that closing? Uh, it's just, uh, uh, it's hard to really get, get into their culture and have access to sales unless you really get to know their business. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Um, so because of the ephemeral nature of social media networks, um, I've been told that I should post my own content and then aggregate that out to social media. What do you think about that? I think it's great. I mean, from your business? Or well, like posting your own blog and then having that image go to Instagram, having that image go to Facebook, but then have the, the source of truth be your central. Thought. Yeah, I, yeah, abso absolutely, absolutely. Again, I think it will be policed in an instant. Either no one will follow and like it or you'll start building up momentum. So I think distribution, you work hard to get that content and there's all different ways to distribute that content. And if it's good quality content, thought leadership, value added, then it's not advertising and sales. If you don't even look at it as advertising and sales, it's you're helping people. And if you're not helping people with something, then um, entertaining, titillation, educating, if they're, if they're not getting something from it, then it's a waste. If it's just you pontificating with nothing really original to say, then um, uh, then you've got to rethink that. And sometimes to repurposing someone else's content, giving them the telling people that this came from someone else, but you were sharing it to your audience is also about this. Thank you. I'm sorry. That's right. Thank you very much.